In this video, we'll tackle the Year 8 Linear Graphing Applications Test Preview. I'll put some time tags below so you can skip to question numbers and question types. Um, we'll kick it off with A, and what we're doing is we're creating rules for these number patterns and completing it. We did a little bit of this in the fundamental section, so if you missed that and this doesn't make sense, go back and have a bit of a look at that. These ones are a bit harder, but it follows the same principle. In this topic, it's all about lines. So all of these will be linear trends, straight lines that go on forever in each direction. So they follow a rule, and the rule is that y equals mx plus c. This is a bit advanced for year eight, but for those who are interested, that's the gradient or how steep the line is. And this is the constant. So this is what happens when y is zero, or when x is zero. It'll tell you what the y-intercept is one day. Now, in the interim, what we've been doing is we've been having a look at trying to generate rules from these. So we're looking for patterns. I can see that these are increasing by one. And obviously the last two don't line up. So we're just going to work with the three that we've got. And these here decrease by two. Okay. Now we know that we've got P and D here. So that means that D is going to equal something P and something on the end. Okay. Now what we can do is we can have a look at this pattern here. And if it's going down by 2, we call this the rise over the run. So the change in D over the change in P is going to be minus 2 on 1. Or in nice simple terms, we can see that it's decreasing by 2. And from here, it's a little bit of guess and check. We've just got to check to see how our rule works here. So let's take this value here because it's nice and low. And let's substitute it in. So we've got... 3 times minus 2 makes minus 6. How do we get from minus 6 all the way up here to 11? We add 17. So I wonder if this will be the rule. Let's test it and see. In the next one, so if we're having a look at the 4 here, if we substituted this into the P, let's see if that works. Minus 2 times 4 makes minus 8. How does minus 8 become 9? We add 17. So this rule's looking good. Let's just check it on the last one to make sure. So we've got 5 here. Let's substitute it in. Minus 2 times 5 makes minus 10. Minus 10 plus 17 does give us 7. So it looks like we've cracked the rule here. This looks like it's going to be the case. So the rule is D equals minus 2 times P plus 17. That means that if we're going to solve for this last part, and I'll just tidy our table up because we've made a horrible mess of it, we can just use substitution to solve. So we know that P is going to be 100. So we're going to say, okay, that means that D, when P is 100, will equal negative 2 times 100, so minus 200 plus 7 makes minus 193. So our answer in the table should be 193, and we've solved this question. Let's have a look at the second one. Looks to me like we are increasing by 3. Get from here to here, we're increasing by 3. To get from here to here, we're increasing by 3. From here to here, we're increasing by 1. We're increasing by 1. We're increasing by 1. We won't worry about this one on the end. It's not really part of the pattern yet. And that's the bit that we're trying to work out. Now, a little bit different, this one. It looks as though it's actually K. Oh, sorry, it's actually C that's being impacted here by K. So we're going the other way around because if you have a look at these ones at the top, they're not 
increasing by one, they're increasing by three, whereas these guys are increasing by one. So let's see if we can write a rule for this. If these guys are all going up by three, I'm going to have a guess that the gradient of this is positive three. And then what I want to know is how do I change these numbers to one another? Or more importantly, probably, how do I change a K into a C? Now, remember down here, we've said that if our rule's right, we're going to multiply the negative 2 by 3 first. So let's try that. Minus 2 times 3 makes minus 6. How do I turn a minus 6 into a minus 5? I add 1. So let's try that. And we'll see if this rule works for all of them. Let's jump over here to the minus 1. And we'll try putting it into this rule. Minus 1 times 3 is minus 3. And minus 3 plus 1 makes minus 2. So this is looking quite good. Let's test the next one. 3 times nothing makes nothing. And nothing plus 1 makes 1. Looks good. Last one. So this one's going into the rule as well. 3 times 1 makes 3, and 3 plus 1 makes 4. So that's looking really good. So it looks like this is the rule. Now all we need to do is find out what happens when C is 27. So it's substitution. So a little bit tricky this time. We might have to turn to balance method. So this time we know what C is, and it's asking me, what k is so this one's going to be balance method which is why it's applications so let's subtract one from both sides i'll be left with 26 equals 3 k i'll divide by 3 on both sides and i'll end up with 26 over 3 equals k not a very nice answer but an answer anyway you might prefer the answer eight and two thirds if you had to plot this on a graph because it might just be a little bit easier for you to um to find on the cartesian plane Question two, now what we need to do is we need to plot these points to create two different lines. So what we've got is x and y values. We'll give this a scale, positive 10, positive 10, minus 10, minus 10. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use pairs of coordinates. When they're arranged like this, this is a x, y coordinate. So that's the point 1, 1. This is the point 2, 3, and this is the point 3, 5. And we just need to mark these on the Cartesian plane. So we'll go across one, up one. Put our first point in. Across two, up three. Across three, and up five. And we've got those ones in. It should have a bracket on it. You get yourself a ruler, neat as you can. Mark this one in. Now we want this to be neat because Skanka asks us to find the point of interception later. So hopefully I've managed to get that neat enough. And the second line, if I do this one in green, this one has the points 0, 3, 1, 4. With practice, you'll just see these points in these tables and you won't have to write it out like this. But we've got 0, 3. We've got across one and up four, and we've got across two and up five. And neat as we can with our ruler, put a line in. And question B says, based on your graph, the two lines intersect at what point would they intersect here on my graph? should make that a different colour. I'll we'll make that blue. So I can see that that's at the point 4, 7. So I'm going to say that they intercept at 4, 7. And in years to come, this will be called 
simultaneous equations. So you might learn about this next year or in year 10. Moving on, question three, we need to graph this equation. Now, this is going to get definitely into year nine work here. So what we'll do is we'll write up some rules. Let's establish our Cartesian plane first. So we've got X and Y's, we've got positive tens, we've got negative tens. So that's all labelled. And now we have to remember that this follows the rule Y equals MX. Oops, a daisy plus C. And there are two very useful pieces of information here. We've got a C value, which is this one here, and the negative goes with it. Okay. And we've got an M value, which if I change the color of that just to make life a bit clearer, that's the five. And the way to graph this is to start with the constant or the y-intercept. Okay, so we call this the constant. Now the name for it is the y-intercept. And this is very important because this point is where it crosses the y-axis. So if this value is minus 10, do you see me marking it down here on the Cartesian plane at minus 10? Whereas if that point had been positive 5, then it would have been up here at positive 5. Or if it was at minus 3, it would have been here at minus 3. So that's my first point, down at minus 10 there. And then my gradient, I talked a little bit about this before, but your gradient, which we also call your M value, is your rise over your run and you can count for that so if it's telling you that you've got a gradient of five if i turn that into a fraction by putting it over one then you've got a rise of five and then you've got a run of one and what i mean by that is if you start down here at this minus 10 point and you go up five so rise five one two three four five and then you run, that means to go across in a direction that's positive, this way one spot, and this is your second point on your Cartesian plane. So we just grab our ruler and we put those two dots together. Put an arrow on each end of the line because they go on forever, and you've just plotted your first linear equation. Question four is quite a tricky little question. We know that this is going to be linear, so we really only need to look at some of these points. Just remember these are coordinates, sort of. So they're 3, minus 11, they're 9, 7, 13, 19. So in other words, there's a relationship between these two points. So I want to know what happens to m to change w. So it's going to be something, w equals something m, something. Okay, so it's still following the same rule I've been talking about for the last few questions, this y equals mx plus c. And if you want to think about it in those terms, then w is really y in this case, and m is x. So we can see that W is changing when something happens to M. So let's have a look at what the change is here. You can see that there is an increase here of 18. And I can see here that there's an increase of 6. Now we don't have constant values going up. What we've got is we've got three random sets of coordinates here. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to have a look at the change in W over the change in M to get us the gradient. Okay, so I'm after this number here in front of the M. And we get the M with the change in usually Y, but in this case W, 
all over the change in M. And we only need to pick it between two points. We could have done it between these ones if we wanted to, but I've just started at the beginning there, so I'm going to just keep working with it. So the change in W is 18, and the change in M is 6, and 18 over 6 is 3. So I've found my gradient. Now, that's all well and good, but we still are missing our C value on the end, and that's going to be trickier to find. What we need to do to find that is because now we've got lots of things we don't know. We don't know what the C is, okay? We don't know what the M is, and we don't know what W is. So we're going to need to narrow this down a little bit. So we can take a pair of M and W values. It has to be a pair, but we can take them. I'm going to choose these ones because they're positive and they're nice small numbers. If I go for these ones over here, they're going to have a negative in it. Yuck. And if I go for this one, they're huge numbers. Yuck. So let's tick with 9 and 7. And what I do is I'm going to replace the W and the M. So it's going to read 7 equals my 3M, oh sorry, my M has now become a 9. So I'm getting that from these guys. I'm trying to keep it all in purple for you. And I don't know what my C is. Okay, so I'm trying to find this little C. You don't have to call it C, but later on you'll have to call it C. So let's just stick with that now. And what we're going to do is we're going to solve this as best we can. So we've got... 7 equals 3 times 9 is 27 plus C. So we can go, all right, let's do the balance method. Let's take 27 from both sides. And I'll have minus 20 over here. And I'll have C here. So I've got a C value now. And I think my final equation is going to be W. So I've gone back up and stolen this. And I'm writing it out without any of the silly numbers in there. Just the ones we found. 3m minus 20. And I think that's my final answer. So to double check that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and I'm going to just try this first set of values in here to make sure it's going to work. So what is w if m is 3? Well, let's do this. 3 times 3 is 9. And 9 minus 20 is minus 11. Yep, that looks good. So we've solved this equation. And this is my final answer.